I live in Dern, it's a town in the Netherlands. I am now 19 years old. What inspired you to want um, to do a project like this? To honor all fallen people and citizens and people will die by terrorist attacks. That's really sad. But you were only like three months old. When yes, I was born um, on June 7, 2001. How old were you when you thought I would like to do something? Um, I was around 14 years old. And when I was just 15, I started really with built uh, Twin Towers. I uh, look for information on the internet, videos, pictures, and a lot of information reading. So that's how I know things, how to build it. Did it start out smaller in your mind, but grow as you started doing it? First, I only built uh, the Twin Towers self, and later I got the idea to build a complete World Trade Center complex that consisted of seven buildings. What did your family think of this? My family think about this. The first, when I uh, begin with this project, okay, um, just start and good luck. But uh, during the towers are raising and getting bigger, they say, uh, maybe you need to stop because a lot of money it costs and a lot of hours. But I still going with the building process and now it's really amazing. How many hours do you think you put in so far and how much money have you invested in this? Um, about how many hours? I think around 10,000 hours, three and a half years cost to build it and um, the money around uh, 10,000 US dollars. I paid completely by myself. What do you hope that people gain from this or learn from what you've done? Um, that everything is possible. Age is not a problem. So you're a firefighter? Yes, a starting firefighter. <laughs> so you're in the business of saving lives and helping people? Yes, <laughs> I am. Why did you want to be a firefighter? Uh, my great-grandfather was a firefighter here in Dern, around 1910. And three other family members are a firefighter. One is now out of service, but two are still a firefighter. My nephew, John. What does it make you think when you, so many firefighters died at 9-11? That's unreal. Uh, never happened. Really sad. You're excited for it to come to the United States? Yes, of course. I can't wait to get to the United States. What do you hope that Americans feel when they see what you've done? I hope, I hope that Americans really love this, what I have done, and um, that many people will and can see it somewhere, maybe in New York or Utah. That a lot of people can get a chance to see it. And you're hoping to come to the United States? Yes, I hope to meet uh, family members from the people who died, so that will be really special. And uh, the stories of firefighters in New York. What do you think the 9-11 exhibit will do to help heal people? I think it will be great for people to see, also younger, um, younger people think about the attacks. How will it make you feel to see your, what you've done, your exhibit set up in Utah or even New York? What will, how will you feel about that? Uh, really great. That's the dream. You see it in New York of Utah. I feel me geweldig over het 9-11 exhibit. Het is echt een droom die uit zou gaan komen om mijn project in Amerika tentoon te stellen. Hopelijk in New York. En dat gaat waarschijnlijk ook wel gebeuren. Um, het is tot nu toe echt een geweldige ervaring om samen te werken met 1365. En um, om zo tijden, om, in onze online meetings um, dus alles te regelen om uiteindelijk dus mijn project naar de andere kant van de oceaan te krijgen, naar de Amerika, de United States of America. The world was changed forever after 9-11. It's here in America. Yes, it's going to be true.
the team. This is so cool. We're with the 9-11 exhibit right now, following the semi, and Texas is kind enough that they've given us a 10 highway patrol escort. semi heads out and starts heading towards Salt Lake and we catch a uh, flight tonight back to Salt Lake. Simply incredible. It's almost hard not to cry. So awesome. This is absolutely amazing. So we have a operations manual that Don Vandersteen has put up. This is this red book has all the um, instructions on how he built it, the blueprints. We're here at the secured location of the World Trade Towers that we obtained from the door in the Netherlands. Uh, the creator is Don Vanderstein, and as an organization, Honor 365 was gifted this exhibit, and we're about to turn on the lights. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so everybody welcome. This is Honor 365's 9-11 exhibit that's here. And today we're focusing on how to heal, unite, and educate the rising generation. So you guys are all here today to be a part of that. And so we're grateful that you're here to participate. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what the 9-11 exhibit uh, is and what we have here. Um, and I'm gonna start over here in this corner because um, when we have the public come in, we have them start here and we talk about the story of Don Vanderstein. Don Vanderstein um, is, uh, lives in the Netherlands. He's from Doorn. It's a tiny little village in the, in the Netherlands. And he um, started building this replica when he was 14 years old. And so about the age of a freshman, right? And so now he's 19 years old, you see his photo here. And he decided to build this replica because his family used to watch a YouTube video that you can look up called 102 Minutes That Changed America. A documentary made from the footage of 100 eyewitnesses who grabbed their video cameras to record an event that would become history. Oh my God. From the moment the first plane struck, 102 minutes in real time. No scripts. No reenactments. Oh my God. I can't believe I just saw that. Jesus Christ. There were two? Another one just hit it. Real people and what they captured on camera as it happened. The smell of burning wire and metal. I don't care. Get out. Running up. All right, shut the window. Shut the AC. Oh my God. A unique historical record of a pivotal moment in modern history. It is Tuesday morning, the 11th of September, and you will not forget this date. Oh, and that's actually live video footage about 9-11 and what happened that day. 
And so it impacted him deeply, and he's a volunteer firefighter in the Netherlands, and he finishes his academy actually in 2022 next year. And so he comes from a long history of firefighters in his family, and he wanted to uh, make a difference. This uh, whole experience of 9-11 had touched him deeply, and so he decided to build a replica. This replica, um, what you see here is the North Tower and the South Tower. It took him three and a half years to build the replica and 10,000 hours of his own time. He self-funded it with $10,000 of his own money to build it. And around the perimeter, you'll notice there's 2,977 names around the entire perimeter, including the six that died on February 26 of 1993 during the World Trade Center bombing. So what you'll see here is the North Tower, the South Tower, the Marriott building. This small black building here to the left of the North Tower is the ATF. To the left also is the FBI building, which is the salmon colored building. The two buildings behind the North and South Tower are the mall area and various businesses that were there uh, that were also impacted when the towers collapsed. And so um, it was a very tragic day in history. And we, of course, want to honor and remember all the fallen that uh, were part of 9-11, but also in addition to that, uh, pay attention also to the families that have gone through a lot the last 20 years uh, since the passing of their loved ones. And from what I understand, you do have a teacher here that uh, had that experience, and, and we're sorry about that loss. I think um, what we'll do next, um, we're going to have an opportunity here in the back corner we're going to put up the declaration that was from uh, Governor Cox. Uh, he two days after he was inaugurated he gave us a declaration it was his first declaration and that declaration is to help us commemorate the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And so I just remember you know traveling underground to get to the World Trade Center and walking up and just I mean, you really, once you got into the elevator, which there was so many, and it was a hustle and a bustle of just uh, every part of the world. The world wept when September 11th happened because this building was uh, the financial uh, center for the world. There was so much going on and so many countries and their finance, their financial, you know, uh, investments represented and, you know, people working for different parts of the country. and. As a family member going uh, downtown while it was still smoldering and meeting family members from all over the world, it was, it was uh, unbelievable. You know, I, I didn't travel the world. I wasn't, you know, a service member traveling the world, but I got to know the world through being a New Yorker and definitely being a teacher and teaching so many different students from around the world. Um, it, it just, you know, it was just such a shock to, uh, to see these buildings smoldering and watching them, you know, collide and, and crash to the ground and then watching them be rebuilt. Um, you know, it's just incredible. So one of the things that we do as military members, as public safety personnel, as elected officials, we take an oath. We take oaths for different purposes depending on what our jobs are. Right, And so uh, this last year, we decided that we needed to have an oath to live. And so what you see behind you is the oath to live wall. This is one of actually nine panels. This is the second one. The first one was completely filled. When we were in Provo, uh, there were tight signatures. And what we're asking you to do, if you choose, is to take an oath to live. We have a vision of a world without suicide as an organization. And it's been really important that the mental and emotional health of every single person in this world is the best that it possibly can be. And for some reason, you know, and I can only speak <laughs> on the military side of it, but I know Melissa could too as a first responder prior, is when you take an oath, it's a promise to do something, right? 
And so that's what you're doing, is when you sign on that dotted line like we did in the military or as a public safety or as an elected official, it's saying that's, that's your scribe, that's your name that you're writing there to say that I take that oath to live. So it's up to you, right? We each have that choice to make that decision as to whether we want to be here. And we hope that you always will be because every single person is of value and is important to this world. And that's what the Oath to Live is intended to do. So we hope you'll take that oath with us today. Another one just hit the building. Wow. We hear some funny noises. We're trying to get him. You okay. have him now. United 9-3, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. Remembering the one, remembering them all. See the 9-11 exhibit, coming to a city near you. Visit honor365.org.